the history of Africa's relationship with Europe is a complex and multifaceted one, marked by both colonial exploitation and intermittent support. For centuries, the African continent was subjected to the domination and extraction of European colonial powers, with devastating consequences for its economic and social development. Even in the post-colonial era, the dynamics between Africa and the European Union have often mirrored those with other regions, offering little recognition of the unique disadvantages faced by African economies. The colonial period profoundly transformed Africa's economic and infrastructure landscapes, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to shape the continent's development trajectory. European colonial powers reoriented African economies to serve their own interests, primarily focused on extracting and exporting raw materials. This shift away from traditional economic structures disrupted local economies and established a heavy reliance on commodity exports. As a result, many African nations became vulnerable to the volatility of global commodity prices, making them susceptible to market fluctuations beyond their control. In West Africa, colonial administrations actively promoted the cultivation of cash crops like cocoa and groundnuts, often at the expense of food production. This led to the emergence of monoculture economies, where a single or limited set of export commodities dominated. The introduction of colonial taxation systems also compelled Africans to engage with the colonial economy, frequently as laborers in mines and plantations. The colonial experience was particularly brutal in the Belgian Congo, where forced labor policies were implemented to meet rubber production quotas. This resulted in significant human suffering and population decline across the region. In addition to the economic disruptions, colonial policies also stifled the development of local industries. Manufacturing was actively discouraged to prevent competition with European goods. This lack of industrialization left many African countries reliant on exporting raw materials and importing finished products a pattern that persists in parts of the continent even today. The uneven development of infrastructure during the colonial era further exacerbated these economic imbalances. Investments in transportation, such as railways, ports, and roads, were primarily made to facilitate resource extraction and administrative control, with little consideration for fostering intra-African trade or connectivity. Consequently, many regions remained underdeveloped, lacking basic infrastructure. The colonial legacy has had a profound and lasting impact on Africa's economic structures and development. The shift towards commodity exports, the suppression of local industries, and the uneven distribution of infrastructure have all contributed to the continent's persistent economic challenges. The uneven development of infrastructure during the colonial period further exacerbated the economic imbalances across Africa. Investments in transportation networks, such as railways, ports, and roads, were primarily aimed at facilitating resource extraction and administrative control, with little consideration for fostering intra-African trade or connectivity. As a result, many regions remained underdeveloped, lacking access to basic transportation and communication infrastructure. This created a stark divide, where certain areas were more connected to global markets while others languished in isolation. The colonial era also accelerated the process of urbanization across the continent. Cities developed around administrative centers, mining operations, and ports, as Africans migrated in search of economic opportunities. However, the urban planning during this period often segregated European settler populations from African communities, leading to stark disparities in access to services and amenities. The most extreme example of this urban divide can be seen in South Africa, where the policies of racial segregation culminated in the notorious apartheid system. This institutionalized discrimination subjected the majority black population to systematic marginalization and deprivation of basic rights and resources. Beyond the urban-rural divide, the education and healthcare systems established during the colonial era were also primarily designed to serve the interests of the colonial administration and settler communities. The focus was on providing a basic level of education to create a semi-skilled labor force, with little investment in higher education or professional training for Africans. This neglect of African intellectual development contributed to a shortage of skilled professionals in the post-independence era, 
as newly independent nations struggled to fill critical positions in fields such as medicine, engineering, and public administration. The legacy of this educational disparity continues to linger, hindering the progress and self-reliance of many African countries. The colonial infrastructure divide, the urban segregation policies, and the unequal access to education and healthcare have all left an indelible mark on the African continent. These deeply entrenched patterns have perpetuated economic imbalances, social inequalities, and developmental challenges that persist to this day. The economic and infrastructural patterns established during the colonial era have had long-lasting and profound effects on the African continent. Many African economies remain heavily dependent on the export of a narrow range of commodities, leaving them susceptible to the volatility of global market forces. This dependency on a limited set of exports, often raw materials, can be traced back to the colonial era reorientation of African economies to serve the interests of European powers. The disruption of traditional economic structures and the suppression of local industries have proven difficult to overcome, perpetuating an unbalanced and vulnerable economic model. In addition, the uneven development of infrastructure during the colonial period has contributed to persistent regional disparities and hindered the integration of African economies. Investments in transportation, communication, and other critical systems were primarily focused on facilitating resource extraction and administrative control, with little consideration for fostering intra-African trade and connectivity. As a result, many parts of the continent continue to lack the necessary infrastructure to support robust economic activity and cross-border collaboration. This infrastructure divide has been a significant barrier to the continent's economic transformation and development. In the post-colonial era, the relationship between Africa and the European Union has been characterized by intermittent and limited support, often mirroring the unequal treatment experienced during the colonial era. The EU's trade dynamics with Africa have frequently failed to recognize the unique disadvantages faced by African economies, leading to a one-size-fits-all approach that overlooks the continent's specific challenges. This equal treatment, without regard for the inherent imbalances, has often made it harder for African products to compete internationally. African producers are subject to the same tariffs and customs duties as those from more developed economies, creating a significant barrier to their competitiveness in global markets. The legacy of colonial-era economic and infrastructural patterns has proven to be a persistent obstacle to Africa's development. The dependency on commodity exports, the regional disparities, and the unequal trade dynamics have all contributed to the continent's ongoing struggle to achieve sustained and equitable growth. In contrast to the European Union's approach, China has taken a bold and strategic step to change the paradigm of trade relations with Africa. By introducing a zero-tariff policy for African products imported into its market, China aims to accelerate the economic growth of the African continent and provide small businesses across the region with unprecedented access to its vast consumer base. This groundbreaking move by China removes significant trade barriers, enabling African producers to compete more effectively on the international stage. This represents a stark departure from the European Union's one-size-fits-all trade policies, which have often failed to recognize the unique challenges and disadvantages faced by African economies. The EU's approach has frequently subjected African exports to the same tariffs and customs duties as those from more developed economies, creating a significant barrier to their competitiveness in global markets. China's zero-tariff policy, on the other hand, levels the playing field and opens up new opportunities for African businesses to thrive. This news of China's trade concessions comes on the heels of another significant development in Africa's geopolitical landscape. Russia has recently decided to write off $20 billion in debt owed by several African countries, underscoring Moscow's growing interest in strengthening its political and economic ties with the African continent. This move by Russia, coupled with China's bold trade policy, suggests a shift in the global power dynamics and a departure from the traditional dominance of Western nations in Africa. It signals a willingness by emerging powers to engage with Africa on more equitable terms, offering alternative avenues for economic cooperation and support. The implications of these developments are far-reaching. By reducing trade barriers and debt burdens, China and Russia are creating more favorable conditions for African economies to thrive. 
This has the potential to empower local entrepreneurs, diversify production, and reduce the continent's reliance on the export of raw materials, a legacy of the colonial era. Moreover, the increased engagement and investment from China and Russia could spur greater regional integration and intra-African trade, addressing the long-standing challenge of infrastructure deficiencies and uneven development. This could, in turn, foster a more balanced and inclusive growth model for the African continent. The relationship between China and African countries has evolved into one of the most dynamic partnerships in the global south, rooted in shared histories of anti-imperial struggle. This relationship spans political solidarity, economic cooperation, and cultural exchange, significantly shaping Africa's post-colonial trajectory. The seeds of China-Africa relations were sown during the 1950s and 1960s, as African nations gained independence. China actively supported liberation movements in countries like Algeria, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique, offering material aid and ideological guidance. Beijing's anti-imperialist stance resonated with Africa's struggle against colonialism, establishing a foundation of trust. China's trade with Africa has skyrocketed from $10 billion in 2000 to over $254 billion in 2021, making China Africa's largest trading partner. The relationship is symbiotic, with Africa providing raw materials such as oil and minerals, while importing machinery, electronics, and tech goods from China. China has maintained robust political ties with African nations, with its policy of non-interference resonating with many African governments that value sovereignty in the face of external pressures. The Forum on China-Africa Cooperation FOCAC, established in 2000, has institutionalized Sino-African relations, culminating in commitments such as the 2018 Pledge of $60 billion in financial support. China's Belt and Road Initiative, launched in 2013, has significantly influenced infrastructure development across Africa. By 2023, China had signed 215 cooperation documents with 155 countries and 32 international organizations under the BRI framework, leading to numerous projects aimed at enhancing connectivity and fostering economic growth on the continent. In East Africa, the standard gauge railway in Kenya, connecting Mombasa to Nairobi, is a flagship BRI project that has reduced travel time and facilitated trade and passenger movement. In Ethiopia and Djibouti, the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway has significantly enhanced Ethiopia's access to maritime trade routes. In Southern Africa, China has provided technical and financial support to modernize the Tanzania-Zambia Railway, while in Mozambique, the Maputo KM1 bridge has promoted economic integration and reduced travel time. In West Africa, the Abuja Kaduna Railway in Nigeria and the Bui Dam Project in Ghana are examples of Chinese financed infrastructure initiatives. China's recent implementation of a zero tariff policy for products from several African countries is a significant step toward enhancing Sino African trade relations and supporting economic development in Africa. This initiative aims to boost imports from African countries particularly in the agricultural sector, to address existing trade imbalances. By eliminating tariffs, China seeks to provide greater access to its vast consumer market, which can lead to increased foreign exchange earnings and job creation for African nations. The policy encourages African countries to expand their export portfolios beyond raw materials, promoting diversification and more sustainable economic growth. The success of this policy, however, will depend on African countries' ability to address structural challenges and leverage the opportunities presented. Addressing issues such as infrastructure gaps, limited value addition, and lack of export diversification will be crucial for African nations to fully capitalize on the benefits of China's zero-tariff treatment. The relationship between Africa and the European Union has been marked by a complex history of colonial exploitation and unequal treatment with the EU offering only intermittent and limited support to the continent. In contrast, China has emerged as a pivotal partner, actively supporting Africa's development through trade, investment, and infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative. The recent implementation of China's zero-tariff policy for African exports represents a significant shift in the global economic landscape, positioning China as a more strategic and potentially transformative partner for Africa's economic growth and integration. 
As the continent navigates the challenges of the post-colonial era, the evolving dynamics between Africa, the EU, and China will play a crucial role in shaping its future development trajectories. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so you never miss another video.